Hey everyone, hope you guys have been doing well. I know it's been a while since I've posted, but today I'm gonna to be showing you guys um, how you can accomplish group work in Canvas. I've been playing around with groups in Canvas a lot, especially now that we're, um, or at least my district is distance learning. So, um, but this can be applied to um, blended education. So if you're a hybrid or if you're fully in the classroom and you're using Canvas, I've done this as well with groups. So um, I'm just gonna kind of walk you through the steps of what I've been doing with um, groups. So with like the people navigation, but then also with collaboration. So let's just kind of get started. Right now I have a module um, that has a set up breakout room page that I use. And you can see I've just created uh, buttons here that when you click on them, they take you to a Google Meet. Now I use this because I, personally think this is a lot faster for my students. Um, I know there's a lot of Google extensions for breakout rooms and then also Google um, just recently added in Google Meet, um, you know, that button that you can click on that places the kids in their own rooms. But the extension doesn't allow you to view the students all at once or hear them at least all at once. And then also I've noticed with the extensions, um, they can tend to run your computer a little bit hard. So um, this for me was just the easiest option. I um, use this sometimes, um, but not, not all the time. So um, let me know if you are at all interested in this because um, I can put this page in comments if you would like. Um, so just kind of an option for breakout rooms. So that was my, my breakout room page. And then I have an example assignment here. So this is just like a web design mock assignment and they have this source here, but then to complete the assignment, they can click on this link. And this is how I generate um, an auto copy. So all I've actually done is in um, Google Slides, when it says edit, I get rid of edit and I replace it with copy. And then it comes up with this link so students can make a copy. So what you can do is you can assign when you have a group, assign a group of kids, have one student be the leader. They can make a copy of the assignment and share it with their group. But if you want to avoid that altogether, there's another way to do it. So let's just click edit for the time being. <clears throat> you can see here I have my directions in the rich content editor. It's a file upload assignment. And then this is the part where um, it gets to be a group assignment. So I assigned it to a group assignment. The group set is called group project. Okay, so in people navigation, I can create a group set by clicking group set and then giving that group the name. So maybe I'll just do for today web design. And then if you want, you can add a dash. I like to add that just because then the numbers, when it becomes numbered, it looks a lot nicer. So then one thing you can do is you can allow the students to sign up themselves so they can assign um, themselves to a group. But um, for this one, I am going to have them split up. So we're going to split the students up into groups of, let's just say, five students. Or you can uh, create the group number. So if you want like 10 groups, it'll auto generate however many students evenly into those groups. And then I want to make sure to require the group members to be in the same section um, because they're in different periods. Then it won't work correctly. <laughs> okay. Now you do have this option to create the group manually, meaning you click and drag. Um, I know a lot of teachers who've used this based off of like data that they have where they want the students to be let's say like in a group of um, diverse learners, so like a high, a middle, a low. Um, it does take a little bit of time, but when you have it set up, it is really, that's one way to do it. Um, so then you can automatically assign a group leader if you want to. I'm just gonna click that box for now, and then we're going to move on and go to save. All right, so you'll notice that I actually only have two people within a group, and that's because these are my colleagues, and I forgot that I only have four people enrolled <laughs> in this section, which is fine. So I had to go back and um, change it to two students. But um, I'm just going to show you an example of if I don't want to have, let's say, Danielle and Darren don't get along, and I need to switch them out of the groups, 
I can do that manually just by doing that. So moving around people is pretty simple and pretty easy. But let's go into a group. So we can actually visit the group homepage. And so from here you can see um, I've created an announcement that is a group Google Meet. So from here I can go to um, create an announcement that shows up on the student's homepage and all I did to add that Google Meet link was use my Google Hangout Meet extension that I have and um, now, now you can see here I have a Google Meet for just this group. So that way when they enter they can see their announcement, click here and then cl click right here join Google Meet which will take them to their Google Meet that only the group can access. So I can see people, I can see who's in this group, um, we can add pages to this group if we want, like a student contract maybe that the students um, also have access to edit. But then the coolest part is this collaboration tool. So I can go in here and create a collaboration Many of you have um, possibly used this and know that you can add a document that all of the students have access to, but the problem is most of the time, or all the time, it's blank. So let's give this a name. Okay, so now I have my web design. This is a collaboration that I have between me and the two students that are in this group. But as you can see, it's blank. So to work around this blank document, you can actually add, copy, and paste slides into here. So let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so let's say this is the outline of the Google Slides that I want to use. Um, I could have questions on here too. Um, but this is just like the presentation and all of the slides that I want them to have. So I'm going to copy this, then go back here, click on the document. And now what I'm going to do from here is actually delete this first slide and paste. So now the format or the layout of the slides it is there for my students to access. So as you can see, we are, all share this. So the students don't have to make a copy. They don't have to share it with their group members. All they have to do is enter their group and click web design. And of course, this will pop up for them. And then from there, they can either sub, you can create a submit assignment page for them or, um, from there, they can just leave it there and you can grade it by going into each group, which is pretty simple. So I'm going to show you an example that I used actually in my classroom this week. Okay, so here are my groups. These are uh, three different periods or three different sections of students. You can see all of this amount of students assigned. So I had five to um, a group, but some of them have four because of, you know, the uneven numbers in a class. And so I can just click here and go to visit group. From there, of course, the students would see their Google Meet link announcement. And then their collaboration is the next page that they would go to and open this document. Now, this is what we used last week. So you're going to see student comments, but you're not going to see student names at all for FERPA. So we have, um, we learned about magnets, and so I, all I did was ask them questions. They had to watch this video that I made and then answer um, the questions as a group within their Google Meet. Um, so they all watched them together, and then they filled out this document together, and it was so cool and so quick. I was really surprised by how easy it was for them. So you'll notice that I did have to copy and paste into 17 different um, groups or collaborations this same document but even though the work for me was all up front and it did take a little while I want to say with adding the Google me and the document um, it took me probably about 20 30 minutes um, even though it took me that long uh, it was so fast 
in my class, like the Google Meet and having them collaborate together and answer the questions, accessing everything was so, so quick for them. And that's really all that matters, especially with this distance learning. I wasn't troubleshooting, trying to help them find where the document was or how um, troubleshooting, like them sharing it with each other, making sure that they all had the document shared to their group. Um, it was just so quick and easy. Um, so yeah, so just another example here. Okay, so that's it, guys. Um, this, like I said, it was really, really fun to try out. It was a lot of work up front, but it was so worth it because um, it made it really easy for my students to complete stuff during their class time online. All right, well, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to comment below. Love it if you would subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time. Bye.